Like gay men became the centerpiece of pop music in the 1980s. But then the AIDS crisis hit, ushering in three decades of displacement and demonization. Follow the yellow brick road. For many reasons, the 1980s was some perfect time for male queerness. The gay liberation movement had been in full swing for 10 years. Sylvester had been at the center of disco, and the Bowie kids were all growing up at the same time that MTV, a new media that prized the high energy visuals of queer nightclubs, was introduced. Gay male pop stars were quite rare during the 1970s, but during the 80s, acts such as Bronsky Beat and Frankie Goes to Hollywood became the gay heroes of the decade. There were even singers in the 1980s who were completely transparent about their sexuality from the start, and their gayness was apparent in their music. Since pop group Bronsky Beat's debut single, Small Town Boy, was about a gay man leaving his homophobic town, and charted globally in 1984, and would eventually form part of the queer movement in retrospect. But the queer male figure in the 1980s pop was largely indistinct at first and considered to be part of the changing fashion times. As time went on, everything in the 80s became more flamboyant and glittered with increasingly more apparent gayness. And such gay media was surprisingly accepted by mainstream audiences. A mystery disease known as the gay plague has become an epidemic unprecedented in the history of American medicine. Then came the AIDS crisis. As hysteria around AIDS spread, everything changed and the tabloids stigmatized gay men by falsely implying that they were to blame for the new pandemic. You know, I would like to be very angry, and I think there's a level at which I am very angry about that. That just because my friends and I are gay, if we are affected by this disease, that no one really cares, that it seems that we deserved it, so let us die. The stigma drove gay men underground and gay stars back into the closet. The psychedelic queer music from the 1980s died out as the 90s arrived and was seemingly dominated by female solo artists like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. The queerness in pop music was basically dead, except for one artist who refused to bow down to what was deemed to be normal. Madonna has always campaigned for gay rights. Even after all the gay stars of the 1980s disappeared, she stated that she owed a lot of her success to her gay fans and refused to fade into the night like so many other gay positive artists. You know, I deal with a lot of topical issues, you know, family issues and, and uh, you know, what I think to be a big problem in the United States and that's homophobia. It was only during the mid-2000s that gay men started fronting pop bands again. Troy Sivan, Ali Alexander and the Scissors Sisters to name a few of the more influential acts. Many in the music industry have decided that queerness in music is once again marketable nearly 20 years after the music industry turned its back on the gay music scene, and not in a good way. Will history repeat itself, or will the gay subgenre be here to stay? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I post new videos. For a similar video to this one, click on this link.